We're now ready to start creating some geometry now that we have all our points in place. Now if you take a look at your screen here, you'll notice I really only put in three uh, points here, not four, no fourth point underneath this number three. And that was definitely by design because when we're creating these patterns, we've got to keep in mind that this pattern here is actually going to be a repeating pattern. So if you think about it conceptually, what we build here is going to repeat here, here, and here, and so on and so forth. So there's really no need to create, uh, in our case, an area for steel tube on both sides because since this will repeat, this steel tube that we're going to put there momentarily will appear on this side. And that same rule will apply for the structure that we have going this way. As this pattern repeats downward and also upward, we really only need one piece of structure going across. Less geometry, less uh, regeneration time uh, while we're working in Revit. So let's go ahead and get started with our uh, tube steel. Really, really, really uh, straightforward stuff here. So first thing we want to do is we want to get a reference line in place connecting these two points. And once that point is in place, we'll then create some geometry and we'll use this line that connects these points, almost like creating a sweep. The line will define the path for the three-dimensional geometry. So I'm going to go up here to my draw panel and we're going to go with reference and we're going to make sure it's just a simple line. And I'm going to go ahead and try to snap these to our bottom points. Now, if you're experiencing what I'm experiencing, you'll notice I really can't snap to these. I can only snap to my elements on top. That's because the last work plane that was set for me was one of these horizontal work planes on my adaptive points. So what we can do to kind of work around that is turn on our 3D snapping in our options bar here at the top. And I can now snap into any point here three-dimensionally. And the key is to make sure we're snapping from point to point. And I'm going to hit escape twice. So now we just need to place another point along this geometry here or along that line actually. I'm just going to place it on the midpoint. I'm going to hit escape twice and I'm going to go ahead and come up here to reference. I'm going to say rectangle and I'm going to try to draw my rectangle here. But you'll notice something. As I try to draw this rectangle I really can't and no line work appears. Well that's because I need to turn off my 3D snapping and once we turn that off you'll notice the crosshair will change from a point to the actual rectangle form that we chose in our draw panel. So we'll go back up to the options bar, turn off your 3D snap, you'll see the rectangle on my crosshairs, and I can now, I should be able to now get this in place. But, got to hit escape twice because we've got to go ahead and set this work plane. So we'll say set, work plane, reference, rectangle, make sure 3D snapping's off, and now we can get this guy in place. Pretty straightforward, right? So now I'm just going to select my line work here and I'm going to make some adjustments to the dimensioning. So I'm going to assume that my tube steel needs to be 2 inches by 2 inches. So I'm going to select this line and then change the dimension. Had I selected this line and changed this dimension, this line would have shot or this line would have moved outward or inward depending on the dimension. I mainly just want this line to move and my bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and select. I'll say 2 inches. Do the same thing. Select the bottom two inches and we are in business. So let's just m move this over to where it's kind of centered along this point here. So I'm going to grab it. We'll say move. Grab it from the center and we'll just snap that baby in place. So now I can select this line, the geometry we just created, and I can click on create form and create a nice 3D form. So now I could test this out here in my environment. I'm going to select this point and I'm going to move this up and my geometry should flex with me, and it does. Perfect. Now you'll notice when I move this, it's kind of skewing the positioning of my geometry that I've created. And what we need to do is we actually need to let Revit know that, hey, once we bring this into our model, we need this to always be vertical and we need everything to be oriented correctly. So I'm gonna hit Control Z. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to our properties and here, underneath Other, I'm going to select Always Vertical. That's going to make sure that when we load this into our project, that the positioning of all our geometry will be uh, positioned in a vertical position. And there's no backwards flipping or any twisting of some weird geometry. So now, let's test this out in our environment. So I'm going to go to Load Project. I'm going In this case, I had this loaded earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and overwrite the existing and its parameters. 
and it's going to be key to make sure you do the one with the parameter selection. So now I can select this wall. I can come down to my uh, drop down here and we can select what we just created. And you'll notice here down here at the bottom left, Revit is doing some thinking. It's letting us know how far along the process is for regenerating this geometry. A lot of times, depending on how complex your geometry is and also the spacing we have here can determine and have a huge impact on the amount of time it takes for Revit to generate this geometry. So you'll see this a little bit later as we get a little bit more complex. You'll notice Revit will start having a hard time creating things. And I'll show you a quick workaround on um, how to make sure that all the geometry we, we create will get placed properly inside this entire divided surface. But for now, we really shouldn't have a problem because we're just cr really creating a vertical member or that tube steel. So again, this is it looks like my program's not responding. It's really just really thinking hard. So I'm just going to momentarily pause here. And then when we come back, you'll notice I'll have all my tube steel in place. Voila. So there we go. I'm going to scroll in just a little bit closer. And now you can actually see the uh, structural members we created in our first step here. And they're all offset to the inside here. And these are all our structural tube members. And you'll notice how even with this uh, offset here and this distortion, the form still conforms to that. And the placement is consistent. They're all offset by that distance we set with our offset parameter.